If only the station was always this full, said the British Rail official, and the Royal Train pulled in right on time. For the hundreds of guests, just one question. And yes, Her Royal Highness was on board. Recently, the Princess has had to cancel several engagements because of morning sickness. Today, she looked well enough, although perhaps just a little pale. Clearly, she's mastered the tricky art of the Royal Walkabout. This time, the talk turned to the going rate for the Tooth Fairy. Big Fairy, come along. <laughs> <laughs> the people of York turned out in their tens of thousands on a sunny morning and in what's become an instant tradition there were gifts and flowers by the basketful more than enough to weigh down a posse of policewomen all traffic had been barred they needn't have bothered no one was moving least of all the 746 bus to Hull but no one seemed to care too much about that At the National Railway Museum, they climbed on to the most famous train of them all, a replica of Stevenson's rocket, which hisses elegantly across the car park along a modest 70-yard track. It, too, seemed to be much appreciated by its VIP passengers. And would they be riding on the smallest royal train of all? Prince Charles seemed keen enough. Perhaps not, said the princess. And off he went without her. Outside, a laughing policeman conducted the crowds in a practice cheer. Then York Rugby Ground, where 7,000 delighted schoolchildren were treated to a royal rideabout. In a prince mobile, perhaps? Chesterfield was next with its famous twisted spire and Prince Charles at the controls of a Wessex helicopter. Below them, the crowd made a stunning sight, 80,000 people waiting just for a glimpse. Among the flowers and now booties and mittens, some Morris men proffered a fertility symbol to Prince Charles. You can keep the bloody thing now, he laughed. And the royal reaction to all this? What a welcome, they said. And indeed it was. Ken Reese, News at 10, Chesterfield.